In this video we are going to be looking at the splines package. We will cover creating curved splines, adding geometry to create new assets, use splines as layout tools for prefabs, create a racetrack using splines, create a cinematic cutscene using splines in combination with timeline and cinemachine, and also coding for dynamic spline creation during runtime. Install splines from the package manager under Unity Registry and find it in the list. Once installed, also import the samples which contain a variety of scenes to help you understand how to use the splines package. Splines can be created from Game Object, Splines and Draw Splines tool. Left click and release to create a knot. Then move the mouse and once again left click and release. This creates a second knot and you can see as the mouse moves the spline auto curves. To create a bezier curve left click and hold as you drag the mouse. This will create tangent handles that allow you to control the curve. Then to complete the loop move the mouse over the first knot. It will snap in place then left click and release. Press escape to finish editing the spline. Another way to close the spline loop where the first and last knots are not connected. Check the closed checkbox in the inspector and it auto connects and closes the spline. I find that moving the last knot helps it to auto adjust for a finer curve. Use direct manipulation by left clicking and dragging a knot. This will give a visual guide to show where the knot was and where it is now, helping you to judge the change. When you have a spline object selected, there is a new icon at the top of the tools panel. This lets you move between object selection, where you can move the object, or spline editing, where you can adjust the knots. Clicking on a knot, we can change the curve type using the element inspector. By default, knots use auto curves, but we can change to a linear, which is a non-curved straight angle. This will change the spline to use straight edges. Knots can also be changed to a bezier curve. This is mirrored, meaning that the tangent handles are mirrored on the left and right sides. Clicking on one of the tangent handles, dragging to order away from the curve defines the curve intensity and angle. Lengthening the handle will change where the curve is taking place between the two knots. A continuous bezier curve will keep the curve going from left to right across the knot in a seamless way. A broken bezier curve allows the left and right handles to be adjusted independently from the other, creating sharp angles. We can use the prefabs in the samples folder for the splines package to look at how splines can be used to lay out game objects. Create a square spline and resize to 25. Add a spline instantiate component. Add a slot to the items to instantiate array and drag the fence prefab into the slot. Change the instantiate method from distance to linear distance. This ensures items are joined together with a set distance between them. Change this to 2 and it now aligns to the square. There is one item outside of the square that can be deleted later. Linear distance can also be set to auto and Unity sets the distance perfectly based on the prefab size and eliminates any gaps between prefab instances. But I'll keep this at 2. The spline knots can easily be adjusted to define any type of shape or size as required, making it easy to create layouts that fit your designs. If you need a rounded fence, change the knot curves to auto, but I'll undo this to keep a square fence. When you are happy with the shape, you can bake the instances so that you can now select and manipulate each fence prefab individually. Delete this fence piece and perhaps adjust this one so it becomes a gate. After baking you can no longer adjust the instances using the spline. In fact the spline itself can be removed. Draw a straight spline. Add a spline instantiate component. Add the building prefab and change to instance count. And now you can type how many buildings you need. They are now lined up in a perfectly straight line. The scale can be increased and they can be rotated on the Y. You can also use random so that it will randomly rotate between two values. Draw a new spline and this time I will have it curved. Add a spline instantiate component and add two items to instantiate and I will use tree medium and tree small. Use the distance to space these out. 
Only tree medium is currently being instantiated, so we can use the percentages to set 50% tree medium and 50% tree small, or experiment with different values. And you can move the knots and the instantiated items will follow the spline as long as you haven't yet baked the instances. Add a spline circle. Set at position 0 and increase the scale to 5. Add a spline instantiate component and add the cobblestones. Increase the scale to 5. Circle splines make it very easy to make great shapes. The position offset can be used in order to modify the shape. And Y will move up the cobblestones, revealing more of the geometry, and this can be modified to make interesting prefabs. Create geometry from splines by adding the spline extrude component in the inspector. The radius of the geometry can be modified. Change the profile edges and segments per unit to find the balance between smoothness and a reasonable amount of triangles. You can also define where the geometry starts and ends along the spline. Pipes can easily be created using this method. Also rings. Ensuring scale is set accurately. We can even add extra knots to create interesting shapes. Splines can also be used to create roads and racing tracks. Here I am using the karting micro game from Unity. The link can be found in the video description below. I am in the main scene found in the karting and scenes folder. This is a fully working game with modular road assets that let you create your own racing games. If we switch off the racetracks, ensure that Splines is installed from the package manager and the samples are installed as well. Now we can create a new spline and add a loft script which creates the road mesh. It needs lifting up slightly on the Y axis. The road texture can be tiled until it looks effective. The segments per meter can be increased to smooth out the curves. Now position the cart classic player on the road. We can see that the road is too narrow. Use the widths array to adjust the width of the road. In the props folder found in the carting and prefabs folder, add the start finish line prefab. Now we need to add some checkpoints. Add a spline instantiate component to the spline and use the checkpoint prefab. Set the instance count to 8. Test out the game in play mode. This makes it very quick and easy to set up a checkpoint system for a racing game. If you want to add width variation to the road, you can set extra spline data points to the road mesh by using the W tool. The blue circle shows the selection point. Click and then resize as needed. Multiple points can be added along the spline to adjust the width as needed. The spline data points are not linked to knots, so multiple width data points can be added between knot data, making this a very powerful system. We are going to create a cinematic cutscene using splines alongside Timeline and Cinemachine. I have two planes chasing this leader airplane. The leader will do a 360 degree loop and appear behind the chasing planes. Now I'm using the Viking Village and World War II Thunderbolt assets and the links can be found in the video description below. First I will switch off the content. Ensure gizmos are switched on. Add a circle spline. Increase the scale to 55 and if you want a bigger loop, just increase the scale further. Ensure that grid is switched on and with the spline selected, click to handle to move the grid to the spline. You can also change the orientation of the grid to match X, Y or Z axes if you want to draw extra knots along those axis directions. In spline edit mode switch on knot indices. Now knot 0 is the beginning. This is where the animation will start. Click on knot 0 and split. If you are using Unity 6 right click on the knot to see the split option in the pop up menu. This will add an extra knot at the end of the circle. Drag knot 0 slightly away to reveal the split. To draw extra knots, use the Draw Splines tool and click on knot 0 as the starting point. Then draw a straight line and press Escape to finish drawing. Do the same, this time drawing from the last knot, number 5, and drawing a straight line. We can now see the loop spline. Rename the spline. This one is for the leader. Now draw a spline for the other plane. To move the leader spline, rotate on the Z axis by 90 degrees 
and minus 90 degrees on the Y. Click on the edit spline and make sure not zero starts at the left. This ensures the plane will animate in the correct direction. Do the same with the following spline. Now the splines can be lined up with the planes. We can duplicate the following spline using Ctrl and D or Edit and Duplicate. The content can be switched back on and the splines can now be positioned where you want the loop to take place. The knots can now be adjusted to define the path for the planes. And this final knot could be turned into a bezier curve to add a nice curve. Click on the leader plane and add a spline animate component. Tell it which spline to follow, so this will be the leader spline. Set the duration to about 1000 and press play. The alignment needs to be adjusted. Change the up axis and forward axis to get the plane to face the correct direction. The duration is the time it takes for the plane to travel along the entire spline. I'll set this to 10. We can check it follows the loop correctly. When it reaches the end it goes back to the start and loops. We can change this to happen once so it ends at the final knot. Do the same for the following planes and set the duration to 10 for those two. I can switch off the default cameras which are part of this scene. Create a new camera and ensure post-processing is switched on and it is using some type of anti-aliasing. I'm going to be using Cinemachine. This should be installed from the package manager. Under game object, Cinemachine, add a new virtual camera. I have my scene view set to a position I want to use as my first shot. With the virtual camera selected, go to game object and align with view. In the game view, I have it set to 1920 by 1080. If follow and look at are left at none, this will be a static, non-moving camera. We can now check how this looks by previewing the lead plane spline animate component. I will use timeline to switch between multiple cameras. Add the timeline holder to an empty game object. Add a Cinemachine track and drag in the main camera. Now the virtual camera can be dragged onto this track. The grey block defines the amount of time this camera is active. Ensure the timeline is set to seconds. At 1.9 seconds, I want to switch to a second camera. I'll position the camera in the village. Duplicate the first virtual camera and align with view. I want this camera to always be looking at the leader by dragging the airplane into the look at slot. The camera will now pan around as the plane moves overhead. Now I can add my second camera to the Cinemachine track. I can type 1.9 in this top box. Click and drag the end of the first shot to ensure it ends at 1.9 seconds and drag my second shot into place. This will create a direct cut between the two cameras. Now I want the next shot to start at about 7.16 seconds. I'll set up the final shot position in the scene view. Duplicate virtual camera 2. I want it to be a static shot so I'll set the look at to none then align with view. Add the last virtual camera to the timeline. Save the scene and press play to preview the animation. You can see how easy it is to create cinematic sequences using splines alongside Cinemachine. Splines are also useful for animating vehicles and trains moving along a curved route. Here a spline is set to follow the track. The train scene can be downloaded from Unity Learn. The link can be found in the video description below. The spline animate component is attached to the train and now when it plays it follows the track. It is using ease out only so it naturally slows down as it approaches the end of the spline. Cinemachine has a dolly track component to move virtual cameras along a spline using this same system. Duplicated trains can use the offset to ensure they start at a position further forward than the original. Now when playing they all follow the same track and stay connected to each other. Splines can also be created dynamically using script during play mode. Here I am using Practical Game Accessibility Case Study Project for demonstration purposes. The link for this project can be found in the video description below. I'm using the Witch Shop scene. I'll switch off the camera control object to set up a static only overhead camera. In the scene view, set up the view from an overhead perspective. Click on the main camera, go to game object and align with view. Adjust the field of view as needed. Create a new script called Pointer. Ensure it is using splines. 
It will store the object position and the player position and draw a spline between the two. A bend amount is also added which can be changed in the inspector. Add a spline variable and also two Bezier knots for the player and the object. In the start method create an invoke to set up the spline. This is done one second after the game starts. This gives the player character time to spawn into the game which will also have the suffix of clone. In the setup spline function the player is located. The spline section of the spline component is added to the spline variable and now we can add the player knot at index 0. Then insert the object knot at index 1. The spline has now been set up. We will then create a public function called find selected object and this will be called from a different script. First we set the player knot position to the player's current position and raise it up a bit on the y axis. The object knot is set to the selected object's position. Then set the player knot tangent out to the bend amount which is on the y axis of a new vector 3. For the object knot this will use tangent in to define the curve and the z of the curve will have a minus 1. This will then create a bridge between the player knot and the object knot. Now we will update the knot data by using set knot. The knot at index 0 will use the updated player knot data and at index 1 it will use the updated object knot data. Now we can set the tangent mode for both knots. Here we state which index to affect and the type of Bezier tangent to use. For index 0 we only want to affect the outward curve and for index 1 we only want to affect the inward curve. This creates a nice arc type curve. Then we access the spline instantiate component and switch it on to begin rendering the arrows. In the update method we listen for a left mouse click and switch off the spline instantiate component to remove the arrows from the scene. Create another script called select object. This will be attached to any object you want to be interactable. We use a bool to ensure the commands only run on a single frame. In the start, run an invoke to find the pointer after one second. This is used to allow the game to fully set up to begin with and spawn in the player correctly. The pointer object variable finds the pointer object in the scene and then in the mouse over method gives us access to the pointer script. We set the object position of the pointer script to match this object we have selected and then run the find selected object function. To ensure this only runs once, set the previewing ball to false. Now as the mouse exits the object, the previewing ball is changed back to true, allowing us to select that object again if we want to. Back in the scene, add an empty game object called pointer object. Add the pointer script and set the bend amount to zero for straight lines. Add an empty spline component and add a spline instantiate. Here I am using a simple arrow graphic with alpha transparency checked. The material is using a universal render pipeline unlit shader and two-sided rendering. The prefab is a simple quad using this material. The scale is used to control the size of the arrow. Add this to the spline instantiate and adjust the up axis and forward axis to ensure it renders correctly. Adjust the distance to ensure the arrows are close together. Now in the scene choose different objects and add a box collider set to trigger. This is used to detect when the mouse is over the object. Add the select object script and this will now be interactable. Set up as many objects as you like. During play mode, left click to move the character. Move the mouse over an interactable object and the script creates a spline and instantiates the arrows making a great visual effect. If you want curved splines, adjust the bend amount to achieve this. This is just a few of the things you can do with the splines package in Unity. Thanks for watching.